Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart, and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Wednesday, May 13th. We're going to take a look at the market action of the last two days, yesterday and today. And uh, we're going to look at our indicators. We're going to look at uh, some of the global indices, the German DAX, Russia, India, China. And then four stocks tonight, Alibaba, Lululemon, Under Armour, and Vip Shop. Okay, so the Dow Industrials, the Dow was down 7.7 points basically today. Uh, kind of a tight range, and that, you know, it just brings up that point here. Let me look at this. Let's look at the, uh, I haven't looked at this. So this is the smallest range, narrowest range in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, last 7 days. So we're getting some compression in here. Um, we look at this, it's about 107 points range, and today's range was mm, less than 100, okay, so about 93. So it was tighter than this range here. So we, we're going to go have to go all the way back into here. We'll look at the SPX, might be a little bit better to calculate. So we're looking at at least 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, the narrowest range in the last 13, 14 days, and maybe even tighter. So... Uh, pretty tight compression coming in here. Now I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to point out a couple things. See this dotted line I've got down here? All right, I'm going to come back to that. Let's look at the Dow Transports. All right, see what's going on. This close today on the transports is the lowest close since October 23rd last year. Okay, so here's, here's the October 24th. Closed at 8568 It closed below that today. So the last time it was lower than where it closed today was on October 23rd. And so this is where I'm talking about all the way back in here. And the, the point I'm drawing, look, uh, pointing out here is the declining tops that we're getting, the non-confirmation that's happening between this and the Dow Industrials. Now you look at that and go, well, wow, it's not that big of a deal. Look, okay, what is this, the 1st of March? Uh, let's go back to the transports. You can see... The, the 1st of March did not go to a new high, okay? And so when you start to look at this, what really jumps out is when you back off a little bit and you look and you say, okay, well, wow, that's uh, that definitely starts to look like a flattening versus, you know, the way the Dow was moving up like this, especially up into here. And, you know, then let's go back and look at that again. And you can see the comparison. Now, it'd be nice if I put these on both on the uh, same chart, but... I didn't do that yet. So, and then we go back to the transports here for a minute. Let's go back to 2007. What was it doing in 2007? It didn't confirm the move in October of 2007, okay? So the non-confirmation occurred back then, a little more severe uh, in here than, but, uh, than right now, but it's kind of setting up that way. I mean, it's starting to look like we're getting this and we're breaking down. So the point of this close, this lowest close, so, you know, what I was curious about is, okay, so where was the Dow Industrials on October 23rd? Okay, if we just close, you know, the lowest close since October 23rd, if you go to the Dow Industrials, you'd have, you'd be right down here, 1,300 points on the Dow lower. Okay, that's how much lower the transports are comparably in terms of where they were trading on October 23rd versus where the Dow is right now. Uh, so, it, you know, the transports are signaling, and this is a part of, you know, many, uh, many of you out there probably already know this, but Dow theory, you know, the old Dow theory of the transports and the industrials should be in sync. Well, why is that? Because the transports were always transporting not only goods after they were manufactured and created, but you know the um, the key ingredients and uh, and everything that were going into the products, the you know the materials, the raw materials going into the products being produced. So transportation average, when it wasn't in sync with the Dow Industrials, was a negative. Okay, so it was it's kind of like okay, the market something's wrong here. The market's not in sync. Transportation should be hitting on all cylinders. Uh, if the if the Dow Industrials are hitting on all cylinders now, you know, granted a lot of things have changed, but that seems to have held up over time. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. Again, we're right in here 
on the on the uh, in the congestion. Okay, the trading range that hasn't changed, and uh, the compression isn't quite showing up as much here as I thought it would. So it's probably the last narrowest range day in our seven day is what I'd call it. Narrowest range the last seven days, and the Nasdaq same thing, just kind of in here sideways action. And New York Composite, similar type action. They're all kind of singing the same tune here. Russell 2000, again, about the same uh, in terms of the last few days, just kind of sideways action. Now, we did come down. That was the interesting thing yesterday. Uh, and if you look at, okay, let's pull up the SP 500. Okay, so here's all the action that happened on Friday with the explosion after the employment report, okay? Well, yesterday we retraced all of that. It came down and actually closed the gap that was in here uh, intraday. Uh, and so now we haven't gone anywhere today with that. I mean, we're down, uh, down 0.64. You know, I'm almost flat, basically. Let's go, let's go, well, I'll come back to the indicator here in a minute. Russell 2000. All right, let's go to the short-term trading index. Uh, here we go. Okay, so it's pulling up. Now the 10-day is pulling up a little bit after we got this extreme reading of 0.87. Okay, so we kind of expect that. The VIX was rallying today, and um, here it is, the CBOE, Market Volatility Index. So did it, it closed right below the 10. I was thinking it might close above the 10, but 13.77, that's almost right at it, basically a hundredth of a point off. So I mean, it's right at the 10 right now. Uh, but uh, again, a little hard to get any kind of reading off of this. It uh, definitely has not pulled back on the indicator. We're right in the middle of the range. Uh, the next thing is the high-low. Let's take a look at that. High-lows basically pulled back up today uh, in here slightly above zero. There were 20 more new highs than new lows for the day on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, we're talking about 52-week new highs or new lows. All right, uh, that is it for the indicators today. Let's go ahead and jump in, take a look at the German DAX. So you can see that the German DAX, here was last Thursday, Friday, and it has just sold off also. So the, the, the big you know, enthusiasm over Friday has definitely gone away in Germany. Uh, and we'll see what, um, you know, all the discussions with Greece are going on right now. Uh, but uh, this has started to roll over and seems to be trying to roll over and, and pull down. And we'll see if it's just a short-term correction or, or what. Uh, we haven't gotten any kind of, on the RSI, we haven't gotten into an oversold uh, category yet. We're getting some divergence here uh, on the uh, DI minus. Uh, so we'll see. The uh, the next one we'll take a look at is Russia. I'm kinda, I am always like to check in on Russia. I mean, Russia's not one of the... Uh, the top, you know, three or four economies uh, in the world. But because of the whole Europe and Ukraine issue, kind of watching Russia, and you can see we're still got this counter trend rally going on. Uh, let's see if we're getting into, um, running into a little bit of bearish divergence here on the RSI and on the DI plus, same thing. So we're getting a little bit of divergence, which you would kind of expect. It almost looks like we're getting a little bit of a, wedgish type action going on here where I draw whenever you start to get these lines closing in on each other you know it's, it's that type of action that type of look to it and a lot of times that is an ending uh, ending type action that you're going to get so uh, we'll see we can kind of see the pullback and it's really you know, pulled right up into where this previous resistance came in, right in here. So that's Russia. India's correcting too. Uh, let's see. And oh, what's right on it? It always knows where I want to go. Let's see. India, Nifty 50. Okay, so uh, my best take on this is I, I do think we're in this fourth intermediate wave. We're, you know, clearly getting this kind of a zigzag type correction. We're now down to the 233-day moving average, and hopefully I've got that. Yep. Okay, so we could be getting some support in here. We'll be interesting to see. Does a rally back up off? It almost looks like it's forming a very small little shoulder head potential shoulder if it breaks on up through there, if you see what I'm talking about. 
And, you know, and again, it's just something that just caught my eye. I'm not I haven't looked at volume or anything like that, but you can draw a little trend line across from that. Given that, given that, you know, it's at this major moving average at the Keltner channels, down in an area where support came in before, you know, when you start to see all of those things happen, you think, oh, okay, well, maybe it is forming a short-term little bottom in here. And then the last one we'll take a look at is uh, the Shanghai Composite, China. Okay, so this has been, you know, as we've looked at uh, and everybody's been talking about the news and all of that, you know, been going sky high, skyrocketing. We've gone through a little bit of a correction. So the question, because we had a flat in here, a little bit of an A, B, C flat uh, in LA wave terms, this is flat because B came back up to the beginning of A, all right? This is potentially more of a zigzag. And so... What I think I'm looking for is something like this, and then I would expect it to come back down in, you know, right near this 55-day moving average. Now, it's always possible uh, that this is just a shallow, and this is still part of three, and that this was just, you know, that we just had a one, two, and we had a big three, and this is four. But because of the way this is looking and acting, I'm leaning towards the fact that we're working a fourth intermediate wave down. Okay, so that's uh, that's my take on uh, on the Shanghai Composite. All right, one thing I want to look at, haven't looked at in a while, is the uh, Baltic Dry Index. And since we're talking about global indices, especially China, okay. All right, so you look at this and think, oh wow, okay, so what is this? All right, well this dotted line is the all-time lowest reading ever on the Baltic Dry Index until February, okay. And this line right here is the low of the 2008 fiasco, all right? Okay, so now if you come back up and look at the picture, and you look at the picture and you say, wow, okay. Now, I, don't, I haven't gone back into the 80s yet here, but what you see is we are still, you know, in terms of the, this reflects, Baltic Dry Index reflects the pricing of uh, the shipping, international shipping rates. All right, around the globe. So, you know, the, the big tankers and the dry bulk goods and things like that are being shipped around the world. Uh, this reflects the pricing and reflects demand. Okay, it also, you know, oil impacts this, oil's down, but the economy impacts this. And you could see what happened to it back in 2008. So when you look at this and you see where it's hanging way down below these lows and uh, down at extreme readings of the last 30 years, it's no wonder China is trying to stimulate their internal economy. It's because the global economy seems to have dried up on them. So that's what's really, really interesting, I think, uh, in terms of when you start to look at all the, the different things that are going on. All right, let's take a look at Alibaba. Speaking of China, take a look at Alibaba. You got this big pop here on Alibaba uh, after earnings, basically consolidating uh, in here. Um, you know, we've, we've had a little bit of, it's, it's trying to work its way through this, I think. Uh, and we'll see. It's, you know, it looks like it's trying to put a little bottom in. Uh, but again, this is the full, this is all the trading on Alibaba. So you don't have a, a ton to work with. Um, I'm still having a hard time getting super bullish on these guys. Now, if we, you know, get a little more, some other better sign than this, then, um, you know, maybe looking to uh, try to get a setup working on these guys. The The next one is Lululemon. And Lulu has been correcting sideways. I, I think it's doing some kind of three-wave chop in here sideways. It may break down more before it's done. Um, and, you know, when you look at Lululemon on a bigger picture, you can see, I mean, look what it did back up in here in 2012, 2013. Look, talk about chop sideways. And then it broke down. OK, uh, so we'll see. Uh, my best take, I think we're in some kind of, you know, number one, the first wave may be over here. Uh, this was kind of funky action in here. Uh, but I think we're doing some kind of one, two, three. Maybe we're correcting some kind of fourth wave is my best estimate on this. And based on the fact that two was deep, I'm thinking four may be shallow. So we'll see. But right now it's not giving me any sign that it's wanting to turn. It's just, you know, and so when it starts doing this kind of thing, you just kind of get real, real cautious from if you're trying to trade short term. And uh, Under Armour is uh, another one 
that's had major, major moves up, big, big moves. Uh, I think third primary wave up, fourth down. I think we're in our fifth uh, primary wave up. And um, right now, I think we've got a fourth intermediate wave pullback in that fifth wave. So I'm expecting one more wave up. I'm just not seeing the turn yet. Right now, it's, it's pulled back. I'd like to see it start to turn, get a couple closes above this 10 and start to turn and get the indicators aligned and uh, and this could be ready to go. I'm thinking one more push on Under Armour. And then the last one is Vips. That will take a Vip Shop. There we go. Vip Shop's a big online uh, retailer out of China and they had their earnings came out and they beat, they, their revenue beat, their, their, um, and they came out today. Uh, revenue beat, earnings beat. Uh, now, this has been, was getting a lot of divergence in here, but bearish divergence, and then it finally rolled over, got this big rising uh, diagonal wedge type pattern that to me was looking very bearish. Now, it started to accommodate this. Will it be interesting to see whether or not this candle, this buying that happened today after earnings is strong enough, or are we going to get some more continued selling in here? We've got this gap over here. That's why I've got this circle. We've got this gap down here that could be begging to get filled. The, if you did that and came all the way down to this top of this bar, what is that, high 22.27, it puts you down here around the 233-day moving average at, you know, near the bottom of the gap, near the 233-day, near the bottom of the wedge. I think that's a possibility, but again, we'll see whether or not this has got enough strength and whether this is turning it or whether the momentum is still to the downside. All right, that's it for tonight. It's Wednesday. I'll be back uh, on uh, Saturday with the uh, uh, weekend uh, market update, and we'll take a look at a lot more things in the next couple of days of trading action and options expire in May on uh, Friday this week. So again, if you're watching this anywhere besides my uh, website, and I don't uh, have the Joe Hinches there, right here, joehinches.net, beyondthechart.com, uh, head on over there and, uh, and check it out. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. It's real easy to do. It gives you, uh, I give you updates. Uh, you're on my email list. I'll email you uh, when I have the new posts. And you get access to the Trade Ideas webpage. And... Um, and you can download the free PDF I've got for you, the five essentials. So, all right, everyone have a great Thursday, Friday. We will talk to you on Saturday.